Hi friends, my name is Amanda, I'm a registered dietitian, and today we'll be comparing the differences between protein powders, gelatin, and collagen. We're going to be distinguishing the differences between each of these, when you would use it, and how you can use them into your own recipes at home. Let's start off by talking about protein powders. Here I have whey protein concentrate, whey protein isolate, and then a plant-based protein. So all three of these jars over here are great because they are a source of complete protein or they contain all the essential amino acids your body requires. So it makes for a great meal replacement uh, when you have a meal that's lacking in a source of protein. So for example, maybe you only have a salad and you don't have any chicken or fish or eggs, this would be a great one to just shake up and consume it. So whey protein concentrate versus whey protein isolate. Whey protein concentrate contains both whey protein along with casein protein. From a digestibility standpoint, whey protein concentrate will digest slightly slower than whey protein isolate, keeping you feeling a little bit more full. Now the advantage of a whey protein isolate, however, compared to that of concentrate, is that it does tend to be lower in fat as well as lactose sugar. So if you do have lactose intolerance or you just don't do well with lactose sugar, you can try to use whey protein isolate instead. However, it does digest quicker, so you might not feel as full for a longer period of time. Plant-based proteins is usually a mix of different plant proteins. So for example, pumpkin seed mixed with pea protein or rice protein or quinoa protein. So with vegan protein powders, it's great if you're following a 100% plant-based diet. It's also quite satiating because it does tend to have a little bit more fiber um, in it. However, if, if there's a certain grain that you don't do well with or a certain seed, just double check on the ingredient list to make sure it doesn't contain that ingredient that you are sensitive to. Now to use these protein powders, you can easily throw it into a smoothie. You can also bake with them. There's tons of recipes online where you can replace some of the flour with protein powders. This way you can make a high protein pancake, a high protein waffle, or a muffin. Makes for a great grab and go breakfast or snack idea. So the best times to use these protein powders again is when you're trying to add more protein to your meals or snacks because there's not any other protein available. Again, in my opinion though, if you can get it from food first, always grab it from food. And if you can't, then protein powders are a great alternative. Let's move now on to gelatin as well as collagen. Now, why would someone want to take gelatin or collagen? Well, the main reason why is in most of our diets now, we don't get a lot of these beautiful minerals as well as the collagen protein found in foods such as chicken skin, fish skin, uh, different cartilage around the meats, uh, bone broth, uh, tendons. So a lot of native diets will eat the entire animal and get all the benefits of the collagen protein. So here, for example, I have some bone broth. I'm gonna drink some here now too. It's so tasty. All it is is basically the bones of pork and beef. Well, that's what I use today at least. And I simmered it for about 24 hours. After I skimmed off all the fat and drained off the bones, I'm left with this beautiful beverage that I can either just drink it like this or I can add vegetables to it to make it into a soup. I can also use it as my liquid in cooking, say rice or quinoa or millet. So it's very, very versatile. Now, however, not a lot of people will make bone broth now because it is quite time consuming. In the grocery stores, you can buy uh, packs of bone broth either in a bag or sometimes they freeze it. So that's a great way of utilizing it as well. Some more convenient product out there now are the gelatin powders and then the collagen. So what gelatin powder is, is essentially it's cooked collagen. Okay, so when you take gelatin and you dissolve it in hot water and then you chill it, it'll become gelatinous. Similar to if you took bone broth and I stuck this in the fridge overnight, it would become this jelly mass, right? So essentially gelatin is just like bone broth, um, but there's, it's flavorless, so you can make it into a sweet application or a savory one sweet as in jello or maybe you can make into a panna cotta or custard. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between a bone broth collagen and gelatin? The difference here is that with bone broth collagen they've hydrolyzed it or again they took it one step further and broke down the protein the collagen protein into smaller segments. So in this case 
Even when you chill the bone broth collagen powder, you won't get a jelly mass. So it's a little bit more versatile in that sense if you don't like that uh, gelatinous uh, mass. Otherwise, you can really just stick with gelatin at home and maybe some hydrolyzed um, collagen because the bone broth powder, it will have a savoriness or savory flavor uh, to it. So again, you won't be able to add it to smoothies or stir it into your morning cereal. Um, so this is where there's a little bit of limitation um, here. The last one is the collagen peptides or hydrolyzed collagen. Similar to gelatin, it is flavorless, so there's a lot of unflavored um, brands out there that you can purchase, and it will not set after you cool it. So the great thing about hydrolyzed collagen is that you can throw it into your smoothies, you can throw it into your cereals, you can throw it into um, different types of soups if you want to, just dissolve it in because it is flavorless, so there's a little bit more applications to it. Gelatin and collagen can come from different sources. You can derive it from cows, from pigs, from chickens, as well as from fish. So when you are purchasing the gelatin or collagen, just always double check, especially if you have a type of food allergy. If you are okay with all four of the different sources, you can look for the multi-strain versions of collagen supplementation so you get a mix of the different types of collagen from each of the different animals. Uh, so there's quite a few brands out there now that you can try out. So what's the difference between, again, the gelatin and collagen versus a protein powder? Now, gelatin and collagen, the major difference between these group, this group versus this group is that the gelatin and collagen does not contain all the essential amino acids. So as a meal replacement protein, it's not the best choice. However, you can always add it alongside a protein powder, especially if you want to keep feeling full a little bit longer. I love collagen because it does give you that fullness and satiety effect, especially if you add it with a protein powder. So that's one way you could utilize it. But remember, I also mentioned not a lot of people drink bone broth or eat tendons or eat chicken skin or fish skin anymore. So having the supplement uh, form allows you to reap the benefits of collagen from a healthy bone standpoint, joint standpoint, and skin health. I hope you found this video informative. Let me know if you have any questions below. And until next time, relish every bite.